Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kimberly Louise and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your prayers and love on my last Bible study with me. I thought I would do it again because I am feeling so much better and I'm so thankful. God is so faithful. He is a healer and um, I'm so thankful to be feeling a lot better. So you guys saw me make my coffee. So go ahead and get yours so we can jump right into this Bible study with me. Okay, so sometimes when I do my Bible studies, I like to use the devotional that I read that day and study some of the scriptures that were was in it. So today's, um, when I'm recording this today, is October the 5th. The devotional is entitled Spirit-Filled Boldness. At the bottom it says, in order to like basically study more, it says go to Joshua 1, 1 through 11. So Go ahead and get your Bibles, your coffee, your pens, journals, whatever you need so we can jump right into this study. We're going to first write down the passage that it recommended. stop at verse 8 because it says this book of instruction must not depart from your mouth you are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do so how I like to do these studies I'll I'll read a passage and then if there is a scripture that's like hey <laughs> look at me I'll I'll just focus on that scripture, but I'm still going to give context around it. So what I like to do is ask questions. So the first question, and I get, I've gotten those from this book right here, how to study the Bible. There is a section in here called inductive Bible study. And it's just asking questions of the text, essentially. So you're doing a, a deeper study. So the first question it asks is, who essentially who is who wrote the book of Joshua to whom was the message originally written and who are the people involved in the scenario that I'm talking about so every Bible should have this there is a section in it um no mine has it at the front it's like a little bit of commentary on the book of Joshua but it's on every book I'm using my um she reads truth Bible by the way so the main scripture that it puts on the first page is haven't I commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go and then timeline it says Joshua is the first of the historical books in the Old Testament the events take place in in the span between Moses's death and Joshua's beginning with God telling Joshua to lead the people of Israel into the long-awaited promised land. Israel first appears in the land west of the Jordan around 1406 BC and Joshua dies after the tribal allotments of Israel around 1380 BC. The author of the book of Joshua is not identified. So that's the first thing. So who wrote the book? We don't know. It says if Joshua himself did not originally write the book that bears his name, someone who knew him well likely did. There are a number of references throughout Joshua that suggest final editing of the book after his lifetime. These include the death of Joshua and descriptions of memorials or names still there today. So we don't know. So we're going to write down. We don't know who wrote the book of Joshua. Okay. And then it says, to whom was the message written? This was actually... This was written to Joshua. Um, the Lord was encouraging Joshua on his next journey, so it was written to Joshua. I think it's so important to have context around what you're reading because it, it kind of gives you a full picture of what, what's going on. So then who are the people involved in the scenario? It's, it's basically... Joshua, so the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. 
Moses was dead at this point and Joshua was taken over for him. So it was just a conversation between the Lord and Joshua. Okay, so I'll write that down. So then the next question is, what was happening? Basically what was going on was that Joshua was gonna have to take over for Moses. And so Joshua was scared. I mean, he, he didn't know how to lead the people and he didn't know what all he was gonna need to do and if he was strong enough to handle it. Um, and so that's basically what was going on. Joshua was taking over for Moses. What's the main point? I gather from this that the main point is is for Joshua to be strong and courageous in whatever he was about to face. And then it says when. So we'll go back to the first few pages of the book. It says, I read it already. It says this was around 1406 BC. I'll just say 1406 BC because this was the beginning. So we'll say 1406 BC. And there are locations mentioned. So throughout this passage, I see the Jordan River. To the land I'm giving to the Israelites, I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses, your territory will be from the wilderness and Lebanon. Uh, the wilderness. There's one, Lebanon, and the Euphrates River, and all the land of the Hittite, so the Hittite land, and west to the Mediterranean Sea, so the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you as, young, as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. Wow, the Lord promised this. He said, basically, all these all these places, everywhere his, his foot treaded, that was the land that the Lord had promised Moses. So that's what he was gonna also give Joshua. Why, are there any clues about why things are being said and done? Why? Because God called him. God called Joshua after Moses to take over for Moses. So the Lord wanted to encourage him on his journey and he kept giving him command, the same command to be strong and courageous. I always think about that when God gives commands and we scared, <laughs> like if Joshua was like, I hear what you're saying, like, you know, I'm going to be strong and all that. But like, what, what am I doing? <laughs> like, can, can we get a little bit more color around what's going on? And it's like, God is like, hey, be strong and courageous. I got you. Everything that you touch is going to prosper. Everything that you do is going to be well. Just do it. Um, wow. Very cool. How he's gonna be strong and courageous. So that's number one. Be strong and courageous. Oh, so he's not gonna look to the right or to the left. And then he's gonna meditate on the words that the Lord had given him day and night. He's gonna meditate on the book of instruction that the Lord had given him. Okay. So we answered. We answered who, what when where why and how i think i want to focus on verse eight like i mentioned earlier this book of instruction must not depart from your mouth you are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do so let's go back i'm gonna highlight thinking about this scripture verse eight I can apply this to my life and, and you can as well by meditating on the word day and night now we might not have we might not have what was ahead of Joshua right like we might not be leading a nation okay um, but maybe you're leading your family maybe you're managing your household Maybe you're leading at work. Um, how we lead others and the things that we we are facing, we have to we have to be in our word 
And I know a lot of people, whenever you read your Bible, it's perfectly fine. I'm prone to the morning so so that my day can go better. Because if I'm meditating on the word day and night, this means that I should be meditating on it all day and night. Now, obviously, we most of us can't just don't have the luxury of just sitting at home reading our Bible all day, right? But what I think it means is maybe you're praying throughout the day and you're praying those scriptures that you thought about in the morning. Or maybe like you you decide, okay, I'm going to memorize scripture. I'm going to take the scripture that I read this morning and I'm just going to try to commit it to memory. Like meditating on the word could be listening to worship music that's like gospel centered, that like the words are actually from the Bible and the Psalms and all of that. Like that is meditating on the word as well. You can even listen to the word. And I think that's what this is telling me because it says he wants us to do this so that we may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. So after you meditate, meditate on the word, you hide a word in your heart, you're focused on that word, then the things that you do after that will prosper and succeed. Um, there's a scripture in Matthew 6, 633. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. All these things will be provided for you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Essentially, this is saying the same thing. It says, if, if you are meditating on the word, that means you're seeking out the word. And then it says, then you will prosper and succeed. And Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be provided for you for whatever. So whatever it is you're believing God for, whatever it is you're trusting him with, whatever it is you're waiting on, he says, do his, do his business. He'll take care of yours. Okay. So that is really our Bible study for today. Let me pray. Lord God, I just thank you so much. I thank you so much for this time. I thank you that your word is true. I thank you that you have called us to be strong and courageous to do what it is that you have called us to do. Bless us as we go forth throughout our days. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me again today for my Bible study with me. I hope that it blessed you and it encouraged you and it helped you dig a little bit deeper into Joshua. Um, join me next week. I'll be doing another one. I'm really, I really like these. Um, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget that God is God and we are not. So we trust him and we let him do his thing. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.